So in this uh, presentation slash demo, we are gonna have an overview and a quick review of the um, new functionalities added to the 2.1 version. I also encourage you to read the release notes, which are as well available for Android, where you will find longer descriptions and, and links as well to the, to the documentation and to screenshots. So, just as a quick overview on the Android app, um, the Android app supports currently the three data models of the HIS2. So you will find their either data sets, event programs, or tracker programs. They are displayed to the user using the same layout. They are uh, framed as activities, so that is tr transparent to the user how the server is configured. And it also has a full offline support, meaning all the demo that you are gonna see today and all the functionality will be working exactly in the same way if you did not have the internet. And only the data that you collect will be stored temporarily and well, will be stored locally until you have connection and then sync with your server. The Android app already has a visual configuration. You can assign icons and colors to your options in your option sets or to your data elements, which uh, will allow you to configure your server uh, for a more intuitive data collection process. The data collection flow is dynamic in the sense that it reproduces whatever you configure with your program rules. You can adjust the next question or the next but the uh, probable uh, offered answers based on the previous que previous questions and answers of your user, which is something that you already can do for tracker as well and for event programs using the program rules that are fully supported. Uh, the last uh, highlight I want to make in this overview is the map view. It was added in the last version. You can view your data in a map either as GPS co GPS coordinates or polygons. You can also collect or render the polygon with your phone when you are entering the data. And moving now to what's new in uh, 2.1, I want to start with the data sets. I'm going to try to combine demo with presentation. I hope the software does not fail, but it has been failing lately. But let's hope it works mostly. Lately meaning 10 minutes ago. It worked well before. Uh, for data sets, uh, the main improvement is that we have added the possibility to adjust the column, the width of your column, based on the length of your data element name. The problem was that previously for data elements of, with long names, the names were cut and there was no way to show them. This was highly requested, so I'm going to open a data set now. And, uh, and then it's, go it's going to load, the, this data set has sections and tables. So as you can see, uh, you can, with these arrows here, you can adjust the width of your column that you may want differently based on how you are using the device. If we move to landscape mode, then maybe you can have more space. It's gonna keep adjusting the height of the column as well, but the name will always be complete. And this works, the rest works as before. You can scroll and see the full table. And when it reaches the end, it's going to move to the next section. So you can adjust every section for whatever view it's more comfortable for the user. And, and uh, this configuration that I'm leaving now, it's going to stay there for the next time I come back to this data, this data set. So I only have to do this once. And then we move to the next one, which is some improvements in data entry. Uh, the rendering of sections, uh, we have changed it uh, all over the app for events and for tracker events. And you can see now the sections differently that I will demo in a moment. They are listed one after the other, and you can also add notes to the event programs that was not available before and the error messages to the user uh, for instance when you try to complete an event and you have some mandatory fields empty it's going to tell you which ones are not available which was not the case before so this is what i meant before connection is being 
rejected by the phone sometimes. Okay. So to demo the sections, I'm gonna use the, oh, sorry, I didn't say it before, but uh, for this demo, we are using the COVID-19 packages that the university has configured and released. Uh, so we are gonna go to a COVID-19 cases event program. I'm gonna create a new event. I'm in training land. Okay, so this is how the sections look now. This event program has seven sections and it's telling me we have zero or, or three data elements entered on this one or this one. We can only have one section open at a time. So when we open the next one, the previous will close. Program rules, uh, they apply as before. So this is a show high program rule. We can change to calendar view if it's more comfortable. So let's say yes, it was tested and it was positive. So for instance, here we are showing the case classification data element and assigning a value based on the previous answers. And then if I want to save now this event, it's going to tell me that I am missing some mandatory fields like the patient ID, sex or age. I can stay save it, but I cannot complete because they are empty. As you can see. Okay, I didn't save that one. We go back to our presentation. And we are going to move now to tracker programs. The biggest improvement in the tracker programs is the possibility to display your events grouped by program stage. As you know, each tracker program can have different program stages, and those program stages can be repeatable. So before, I'm gonna open the program. So for this one, I'm gonna use the port of entry program. Okay. So search for session. I'm gonna, oh wait, and we lost the screen. And, So I'm going to enroll a tracked entity instance to showcase this functionality. So for instance, the first of May. Okay, I'm not going to complete all the fields for this patient. It's gone again. One more and I give up. Okay. So I just wanted to see that if I add more events here, for instance, this program, for this program, the patient has to have follow up daily during the first 15 days. So I'm adding those quickly here. Add a new event, another follow-up for the second, the third. I'm not adding any data and we don't have mandatory fields. I'm gonna add another one. No, I don't need another one. So this is how the events you are not seeing. Sorry. This is how the events are displayed. Right now, they are ordered chronologically. And the new thing now is that we can group them by stage. So this is telling me that these are the three type of stages. We have one event in the registration because that one is not repeatable. We have two events as follow-up. Another difference now here is that to create a new event, I click here in this little plus button and then it's asking me, <clears throat> Directly, what to do because it knows in which program, in which event I am. 
So just for the sake of the use case for COVID, I will just uh, show the relationships. This is not new, but uh, just for the demo, you can, you can add relationships. So this program is configured to add contacts. So here we can say that this person was a contact of this one, and then here we link the patients and we can navigate from one record to the other. Okay, back to our presentation. The next functionality are the filters. Filters are available all over the app. And the only new thing that we have added here is that the filters are also in the track entity instance dashboard. So you can filter uh, your events belonging to one, one track entity instance enrollment and also the assigned to me filter which will do as similar to what Marcus was demoing. It will show you only those either tracked entity instances or events that are assigned to the user that is logged in in the app. And then the last one are the new rendering types. There are several new rendering types. Two of them are the QR code and the barcode. QR code and barcode are rendering types for data elements of, type, of value type text. So we configure as a normal data element of value type text, but then when we configure the program, we can say, render this as a QR code or render this as a barcode. And the same for data sets and uh, Boolean, yes, no data elements, or yes only, you can configure those as radio buttons or checkboxes, either horizontal or vertical. So I'm gonna try <laughs> for last time to show the phone just to demo this last functionality because it was highly requested before and to demo this one i'm going to use the contact tracing program so as you can see here in the search screen uh, for this demo we have configured this program having both the qr code as a system generated contact id and the barcode for the local case id so we can oops i dropped the phone Okay. So to use them for search, I'm gonna prepare here this barcode, and then I clicked on this on the phone. I render, and now we go back to our phone. So this is the ID of the user that I already rendered as a generated a QR code for. My search, and this is the patient that I was looking for. So, this is one use of the QR codes. And to assign a value to one of those, either the QR code or the barcode, we do the same. So, I'm gonna go back to the phone, like this, and then if we click here and render a barcode that is already generated, it's assigning that value to that specific field. So now you can search by that one as well. If we clear our filters, we, could, we can search as we did with a QR code. And I'm, gonna t I'm not going to try to do that again because it's dropping. The last two I didn't demo, but you can render your option sets, your yes, no value types, or your yes, only data elements as either horizontal or vertical radio buttons and checkboxes. And uh, just to link with our next section, uh, during this presentation, I was using the COVID-19 metadata. If you want to test the app with your server or with this, uh, testing server that uh, is prepared. You can just, you just have to download it either from Google Play or from GitHub, uh, enter with this uh, user credentials that we are sharing here. They are also posted on the website. And then just start playing and start adding your, your data and testing the app. 